Even with the likes of Dark Souls, Super Meat Boy, Cuphead, and many more truly difficult video games, apparently, for some, that wasn't enough of a challenge. So let's have a chat. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 genius ways that people beat video games. Number 10. Zero Stars Super Mario 64 Super Mario 64 is one of the most revolutionary games ever made, in part due to the star collectibles that dominate the game. Now, each level has approximately seven stars, and to progress through Peach's Castle, you need to obtain an ever-increasing amount of them. There are 120 stars in total, but you can reach the final level with only 70. However, even though stars are the meat and bones of Super Mario 64, clever speedrunners discovered that it's possible to beat the game without collecting a single one. As it turns out, the classic title has a lot of unintended bugs and glitches, particularly inside Peach's castle, where various corners and doors will cause Mario to clip through and go out of bounds if approached in just the right way. From here, it's just a matter of clipping through each Bowser level to obtain the key necessary to advance through the castle properly, and then you can reach the final level and promptly beat the game without collecting a single star. A lot of time and dedication went into discovering these glitches, and even more time was put into practice to execute them making something that was once thought of to be impossible into pure reality. Number 9. A Literal Blind Playthrough The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time So here is the tale of Terry Garrett, a blind gamer who lost his sight at 10 years old. But even after this, he wanted to continue the joy that came with playing video games. So, in 2011, he set out to beat Ocarina of Time while never looking at the screen. He used two speakers situated around him to signal enemies, all the while using the hookshot to learn whether he's facing a wall or not, and save states to preserve progress every time that he messed up. The process was incredibly difficult, and he even said himself that he wanted to give up multiple times. He felt like it wasn't worth it, that he would never ever win. But the community that he built up around him stuck with it. Him and helped him move past multiple points by giving him walkthroughs and videos to listen to. Eventually, after playing the game for five years, he finally dealt the last blow to Ganon. Garrett was approaching this game in what many would consider to be the hardest way possible, but he persevered and found clever solutions to playing Zelda and beat it in the process. And he's gone on since to play multiple other games in this style. What an absolute ledge. Number 8. DDR Dance Pad Bloodborne In the late 90s, arcades started to find new popularity with an experimental rhythm game that differed from the classic arcade cabinet. And this was Dance Dance Revolution, a game that asked you to dance along with it by following the directions to the beat. Since then, game mats have been created for at-home use, and the game has found life in both arcades and consoles. So of course, people needed to find services for it other than just dancing, clearly. Now, by setting up each direction of the dance pad as a controller, gamers on Twitch and YouTube have been able to play all kinds of titles with it, including one of the hardest ever made, Bloodborne. Now at first, a YouTuber called a twerking Yoshi great name there first beat the Cleric Beast using this rather odd controller, but a year afterwards, a Twitch streamer named Luality attempted the same challenge, but this time with the aim of beating the entire game. Now this sounds extremely difficult, but you know what, she makes it look bloody easy. Reaching the last level and making it to the DLC's final boss, Orphan of Kos, with minimal deaths. This fight is already significantly hard by traditional means, but here she is absolutely bossing it out. And thanks to Perseverance, and a lot of dancing, she was able to take it down. But she even took it further than that and trained her rabbit to try and beat the cleric beast, which it did! Number 7. Donkey Kong Bongos – Call of Duty Donkey Kong Jungle Beats was a very weird game. It came out after Rareware stopped making DK games after being bought out by Microsoft, so Nintendo was once again responsible for creating new entries in the franchise. And what did they come up with? A rhythm game that required a bizarre peripheral to play, the Jungle Beat Bongos, a pair of electronic bongos used to play a variety of Donkey Kong games. Now, while they were initially intended for a few specific titles, people found a lot of other uses for them, with one of the most notable being used to play online games such as Call of Duty Vanguard. A YouTuber named SuperLouis64 used the bongos as a proper controller by modding the game, though not without its limits, such as the fact that you could only shoot, crouch, and slide by hitting a few specific areas of the device, he was able to use the bongos to achieve an unbelievable kill and assist streak of 105. Fair play to you, mate. Number 6. Twitch Chat Pokemon Red 
Do you remember group projects from high school? This is like that, but better. In 2014, an anonymous Australian programmer set up a game of Pokemon Red on a Twitch stream where the chat dictated the actions of the Pokemon trainer. You can type B in the chat and the game pressed B on the controller. You pressed up and the game pressed up and so on. The stream became an instant hit as people flocked to participate, even if the concurrent 80,000 people playing resulted in difficulty just getting through the game normally. And for a moment, with all of these conflicting inputs, it looked like beating the game would be impossible. Many hours were spent in one area just walking against walls or strolling through a menu infinitely, with many people growing frustrated over the lack of progress. But then, after 16 days of continuous gameplay, Zapdos performed one last thunder shock against Blue's Blastoise and the game was finally beaten. The Twitch stream has become extremely popular ever since and has been done with multiple other games such as Dark Souls and Pokemon Crystal, but the original still stands as the most impressive a time when gamers worldwide united to become the ultimate Pokemon champion. Number 5. Powered by Potatoes – Doom If you've gone to any high school science fair, chances are you've seen the classic potato battery, but if you're unaware, the potato has the minerals and metals necessary to generate electrodes that can be used to light a light bulb if wired in a specific way. This experiment has been done many times and helps answer many questions kids have regarding energy, but gamers have discovered a new question that experimentation needed to answer, and that was, how many potatoes does it take to run Doom? This is the question YouTuber Equalo asked asked himself. But unlike many others, he pursued the drive for knowledge and experimented for the answer. After calculations, he realized that it would require approximately 770 potato pieces to play Doom the traditional way, but after some trial and error, he couldn't execute it properly, and since he had rotting potatoes lining up in his garage, he felt like giving up. But then it hit him. Instead of using a traditional complex computer, why not use a graphic calculator, a device that required much less power? After setting up approximately 200 potato pieces, he hooked it all up to his batteryless calculator and indeed played Doom. Number 4. Lipstick – Counter-Strike Now this is truly out of the box thinking. Using a Makey Makey kit, Twitch streamer Chloe, and I'm going to butcher your surname and I apologize for this, Des Moino, hooked up a control board and some alligator clips to her lipstick, which then connected to the button presses of her PC through USB, creating what she calls Lip Strike. She used this to play Counter Strike. Now, she still used a mouse for various actions, including left click to move, right click to aim, and the scroll wheel to switch weapons, but firing is decided by makeup. It's impressive seeing her use it in action, using automatic weapons and sniper rifles with relative ease as she racks up kills and wins multiple matches over with her setup, and truly it is something that needs to be seen to be believed. Number 3. Bow and Arrow – Overwatch Twitch streamer Rudasim has won a fair few rodeos playing games with weird controllers. He played Doom with a Guitar Hero guitar and World of Warcraft with a dance pad. But none of this compared to his time with Overwatch. He's played many of the game's heroes with obscure controllers, like D.Va with a joystick and Winston with bananas. But no one stands out as much as playing Hanzo with a Nerf bow. He configured the bow using wires, bolts, and tapes to perform specific actions. Pulling the bow readies Hanzo's bow and releasing it fires it. Tapping activates quickfire, and touching other parts of it performs the character's further actions. It took him hours to set the whole thing up, and even still, he required a dance pad to be able to move around. As you can imagine, playing the game was very, very difficult, but with a lot of practice, he eventually won a round and even got a double kill. Number 2. Three Games at Once – Mega Man X the speedrunning community has come up with many ways to beat games in the past, but one version of speedrunning totally stands out, and that is tool-assisted speedruns. The idea behind this is that instead of playing the game in real time, it will simply react to a set of predetermined commands. Now, This might sound like cheating at first, but it's completely the opposite, because you can reach levels in gaming that would otherwise be impossible for a human to do. Case in point, Mega Man X. About 10 years ago, YouTuber Agwawaf performed a tool-assisted speedrun where they beat Mega Man X, Mega Man X2, and Mega Man X3 100% simultaneously with the same controller inputs. The amount of time and effort put into this is incredible, as every single input serves some purpose in helping Mega Man reach his goal. A lot of the run depends on loading screens and times where one Mega Man isn't moving while the others continue. There are minimal deaths and only a few hits, and not to mention the entire speedrun was finished in under one hour. It might be a tool-assisted speedrun, but it's still one of the most remarkable and most clever ways that somebody has beaten any video game. And number one, Bananas – Dark Souls 3 
Now, topping this list is, as expected, Dark Souls. People have found many ways to beat one of the most challenging games of recent times, including using a rock band guitar, voice commands, toasters, and the most ingenious of all, bananas. Now, you're probably confused when I say that somebody played a game with bananas, and I know what you're probably thinking, that maybe they used a Donkey Kong banana controller from the N64, right? Well, no, this person beat Dark Souls 3 using approximately nine actual bananas. By plugging in a series of bananas to a power source, YouTuber and Twitch streamer Super Louis 64 could trigger a command by tapping or pressing down on one of the pieces of fruit, whether it's attacking or using the classic Estes flask. After doing this, he proceeded through Dark Souls and streamed the entire game in 2017. He went through everything, including boss fights and some PvP, with some sections being more challenging than others, but he managed to deal the final blow to the soul of Cinder and beat the game with bananas. And later on in 2020, he redid the challenge to prove that the original wasn't a fluke. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 genius ways that people beat video games. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work. It'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friends because you deserve all the best things in life and do not let anything or anyone else tell me you otherwise, all right? You are a massive ledge. Now go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll